by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. In chapter 2 verse 1 says, we must therefore pay more attention, or we must therefore pay more careful attention. I like the emphasis of the careful attention. Therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. The writer to the Hebrews wrote to a church of people who had a Jewish background. A people who took pride in themselves as the people of God. As the people who had the covenant, the old covenant, and who God has done miracles through them and their ancestors. Many of you understand that it is difficult to convince a person who believes in a religion, whether he is a Muslim, a Christian, with the truth, than a person who claims to be an atheist or a person who is an agnostic. Why? Because religion usually blinds. There are many people who sit in churches, who hear the gospel over and over and over again, Okay. I was saying that it is very difficult usually, and this I am saying because when I was in Ghana, I could see how God has blessed Africa with faith. And I think that in most developing countries like the Philippines also in other places the church has become so strong why because people run to God in their need they go to God they want to see God they want to see God's face that is the ultimate that's the last chance that they've got so they're saying what do I have to lose? But in Europe or in the developing in the developed world, people would want to keep a veneer of religion but live their very own lives in the way they want to live it. Religion becomes an intellectual exercise. And the other problem that I found also when I went to Africa, when I went to Ghana, is that religion can become a commercial object where God becomes a means to become wealthy or to become rich or to become healed. So whichever way, we see God as a means to an end, but not the ultimate end of things. And Paul spoke to the church. This Hebrew, or the book of Hebrews, different churches, and he says, look, God has spoken in the past to us to our forefathers through the prophets. Mm. Moses gave the law. Elijah, Abraham, eh? all the prophets, they all spoke in different ways, at different times, and for different situations. But now, he says to us, 
He has spoken to us through His Son, Jesus. And He says Christ, He says Jesus, as the most preeminent of all. And if you read further, He will say, Jesus was not an angel. He was more than an angel because he's the son of God. He was not a prophet. Why? Because he's God himself, through whom he made all things. And therefore he warns the church. And he says to the church, therefore, be careful. To you who have received the truth, to you who are saved, to you whose sins have been forgiven. To you who are simple enough to receive the gospel message. Through which you are saved. He said you must pay careful attention. That you don't drift away. How do we drift away? What makes us drift away? You know, you can go to church and when you go out of church, you forget about church until Sunday when you go to church. Does it happen to you? Does anybody here? Does it happen? Why does it happen? Some of us more, some of us less. And thank God if you leave church and you are in the spirit of church, church means the fellowship, from Sunday to Sunday. And why do I say so? Because sometimes it is so difficult for some of us to even make it to pray. And it is a symptom of what we live our lives individually. Because the church is a reflection of how you and I live outside our fellowship times. If the church is vibrant, then we have a very vibrant, active life with Christ. If the church is dead, quote unquote, then you and I have a dead life after our gathering times. And this is a warning that we have to take very seriously. I don't know what Marcel preached last Sunday, but when we spoke over the phone, she gave me an idea of what she was going to share. She did good. She did good. You see? She's, she's a better preacher than I do. But there are conversations. I was talking to someone when I went to church in Ghana last week, last Sunday, and people are fasting and praying every day. They are on fasting and prayer every day. But then I ask myself, does that fasting and prayer go along with right living with God? Do I fast and pray and live a life with God, an intimate relationship with God, or am I forced to fast and pray because I need something from God, and yet my life is not righteous with Him? I want to tap into the power of prayer. Because whenever I fast and I pray, God answers me. 
There is power in prayer. But is it just prayer I am praying about? Or is it God I am living with on a day to day basis? So you see, religious things can, out, can take me away from God. I can drift away through doing religious things. Ah, there's a chair. Sorry. There's a guard. So the warning here is this, be careful that you do not drift away. Drift away from the truth. False teaching is a very um, a dangerous thing to the church today. People want to enjoy the power of God without having a relationship with God. We should not be tempted by what is seen, but we should be careful to walk with God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So the warning is this. What makes you drift away? You know, work can make us drift away from God. If you don't pray every day, if you don't have the time to meditate on God's word, if you don't have the time to have an active prayer life and a, and, and a life that looks into the scripture, your heart will be empty and you will drift away. The warning was to Christians, not to non-Christians. And this morning when I was, you know, when I was preparing just yesterday, the Lord laid this on my heart. He said, pay more careful attention. Because what is most important is our true knowledge of Jesus and who He is. Our true knowledge of Him. He is our Savior. He has died for us. Our sins have been forgiven. We are not all condemned, as Jimmy read this morning from Romans 8. If God is for you, then who can accuse you? Who can condemn you? And the answer is no one. However, do not let your freedom take you away from Him. Because if you drift away, Whatever it is that makes you drift away, it can be religious activity, it can be work, it can be family responsibility, it can be for students' studies, whatever it is that makes you drift away from your faith and grow colder, it will take you away from the truth. You will still keep a form of religion. But in your heart, it's empty. <clears throat> what you have heard, do not drift away. What you have received, do not drift away from it. What you have learned today, do not drift away from it. One, one of the things that Jesus said to people was, I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. I was with one of my my uncles, and they were, they were going to pray, you know, in my house, obviously. And what they did was they switched on television for me, and they said, "Oh, you keep on watching the television, and then we are going to pray." You know, <laughs> you are a Christian, you know, you don't pray like us. So <laughs> I said, "No, no, 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 no. I am going to switch off the television, and you go and pray, and you come." And then they said, "No, so you will eat. So we prepare the food, and you are eating. So before you." Eat, before you finish eating, we'll finish praying. I said, no, I want to wait to eat with to eat with you. So they all left me alone in the house with the food and television, and they went into the mosque to pray. And I sat there and going. They have accepted me as a Christian. But what they are saying to me is, you have your God, and we have our God. <laughs> as long as we all believe that we all have our different ways of worship, and we respect each other, it's fine. And I'm sitting now, and I'm going, preach the gospel, preach the gospel, and I'm going, no, respect your family, you know, I was struggling inside of me. I said to myself, these are good people. They are wonderful people. What is wrong with them? They are good people. They don't lie. They don't steal. They don't hurt anyone. In fact, they are more faithful my uncle had the computer open, a laptop, with the Quranic verses reciting all the time. He was hearing. And I went, wow, look at how committed they are to what they believe. How many of us Christians listen to the Bible? How many of us Christians pray five times a day? And when I spoke to my uncle, I read the conversation. I read the conversation. Of course, I had to stay the conversation to Christianity somehow. And my uncle raised the question of Jesus being a prophet. He said, oh, you know, Jesus was a very good prophet. Even the Quran says so. And I said to him, Jesus is more than a prophet. In fact, Jesus, even from the Quranic point of view, is more than a prophet. He is the word of God. Not only is he the word of God, he is the road upon which man can reach God. You know, he got up and he silently just walked away. But that's the truth. That is the truth. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one can come to my Father except by me. Now how do we get this to the society in which we live today? Because our society here is a very tolerant society and thank God for a tolerant society and we all must tolerate others and respect for the dignity of everyone and the right of everyone to believe whatever they believe. 
That is a fundamental right. And I believe in that. But be careful that this environment of liberalism and freedom would make you drift away from the truth. We are not just another religion. Amen? We are not just another religion. We are a body of believers in the gospel. We are a body of believers in the death and resurrection of Jesus. And it's not just Sunday morning that we believe this. It is every day. And this must bring a transformation of our life on a daily basis. Do not drift away from what you have heard. Do not drift away from the truth of God's word. What is important to God? And I'll end from here. And that's why the writer to the Hebrews wrote to the church. At some point they were saying, we are Jews. We are children of Abraham. We are children of covenant. We don't need to suffer. God loves us. They began to tone down and they began to believe. We are blessed by God. We are loved by God. We are this and that. But their life with God was beginning to weaken and weaken and weaken because of persecution. Today, we can drift away because of the environment in which we live. And the advice is today, for me, that God wants to speak to us and say, do not drift away. Believe in what you have heard. Continue to live in what you have been taught. What desires God and Hebrews 11, and I'll end with this, Hebrews 11 says this, Without faith, no one can see God. And faith is believe in the truth of God's word. And faith translates itself into righteous living. Faith translates itself into holy living, into a life of righteousness. Now today my question to you is, do not just make church Sunday, make it every day. Amen? Amen? And I want to encourage you, huh? every Wednesday as we meet to, to pray, do not let work take you away. Come, join us. Let's pray. Do not let anything make you drift away. For God in these last days has spoken to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. In Him you have all things. In Him, you have all the heavenly blessings. Do not let anything distract you away from Jesus Christ. He is, He is our Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you as we walk together in this life of faith. Let us pray. Father,
this morning.